I I'd like to start off with uh, with a verse. I'd like to start off with the Word of God, Matthew 25. You know, paraphrasing. You know, what you do unto the least of them, my brethren, truly you do unto me. I say this, you know, regrettably, uh, you know, some of the Kurds I met were amazing people. I promise you they will defend Christians to the death, but unfortunately, in many areas, they they leave us out to dry. Uh, and again, I, I, I say this regrettably, like, I, I, I swear I love some of them as brothers, but some of them don't care a damn about us. We were left in villages. Now, mind you, the Kurds, they complain about not having weapons, right? They had the heavy weapons. They have the Dushka 50 cals, the dual 50 cal anti-aircraft systems, uh, RPG, stuff like this, right? They would literally leave us, and, and, we're, and then we hold out these two towns by ourselves. They left us on our own. We never left. When ISIS was coming to attack, the Christians, they, they, they never left. The Kurds left us, they, and not only did they leave us, they took the heavy weapons with them. They left us with literally man-served machine operating systems uh pkc you know what i'm saying just 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 basic weapons that that any iraqi would have they left us on our own uh you know they they, they claim to be the the defenders of the christians let me tell you something they're not you want to know who defends the christians christ because without him we're 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 100 screwed everyone left us Everyone left us, the Iraqi army, especially the Kurds. Uh, now, not all the Kurds, don't get me wrong. I mean, a lot of them are very defensive of us, but the leadership, I will say the Kurdish leadership, they left us, they abandoned us. And not only did they leave us, they took the heavy weapons with them. They left us to fight groups with mortar systems, 50 cal systems. Uh, I mean, everything you can imagine. They stole these from, the, I used to work for a defense contractor. They have Abrams tanks. I mean, everything they stole from the Iraqi army is at their disposal. What did we have? PKCs, AK-47s. I mean, literally the most basic of weapons. Everyone abandoned us. Christians who want nothing more than to leave Mosul. I'll tell you this, first off, it breaks my heart. If you want to leave Mosul, you need to pass. That means you have to sign on three family members that if you don't return after six days, they will kill these family members. 
We have a group of Christians who are being assisted by people inside. All they want to do is leave because every single Christian there has just been slaughtered. They try to leave. These people who thought, you know, that they, you know, you know that they say it's that, that light at the end of the tunnel, right? You know, I, I got out, I got out, but guess what? That light at the end of the tunnel, it, it shut down on them, dude. Because the Kurds have stopped them and refused their entrance in the Kurdistan proper, and they return them to Mosul. I don't need to say what happens to these people, man. What do you think happens to them? The same thing that happens to the bishops, the priests, and everyone else, every other innocent civilian who doesn't agree with the third form of theological bullshit, the same happens to them. They're beheaded. The noon is, is painted on their house. Their daughters are sold into sex slavery. Their wives are sold into sex slavery. And to be honest, I, I don't want to go into detail because I don't need to. I mean, the people who try to escape can't even escape because the people who are our friends refuse to let us even, we're not asking for anything just to pass. And they won't even let us pass. In the same way that Christ said, we will be beheaded in these times. What do you think? Do you think Jesus lied? They were sent back and they were beheaded in these times the same way that God said that they would be beheaded. I mean, there's, there's no point of, uh, I can describe a beheading, I can describe many things, but there's no point. I mean, the people are turned down by those who are supposed to help them, and they're slaughtered. You know, I, I don't know what else the world needs to know, but, you know, they need help. You know, God knows they need help. When, when you leave, if you get permission from Daesh, ISIS, you have to sign a pass, and you've got to label three family members on your pass to leave. Anything more than six days, they execute the three family members you've selected as your sponsors. There were several families that made it out because of God-fearing men and women who were willing to put their lives on the line, and they got them out of the city. They couldn't get far enough. When they tried to get past the Kurds, the Kurds sent them back to their death because they wouldn't let them escape. Why? I, I don't know. I can't tell you. I, I also can't say all oh, Kurds are like this. I promise you they're not. But what I can say is that people aren't helping us. They're not. They had people inside of Mosul to smuggle them out. So these families were smuggled out without having to sign family members. Mm -hmm. So they made it scot-free, you would think, right? Mm -hmm. Wrong. Wrong. Right when they were crossing the border to where the Kurds should have accepted them into their land, the Kurds rejected them and sent them back. So they thought they made it scot-free without the expense of their family members being killed. Mm -hmm. Every one of them were killed. Every minority, the Shia, uh, the, the Christians, uh, the Sunni even. Who am I kidding, dude? Every minority that has ever escaped that land, the Kurds at certain points have just turned them back. And, and where do they go? The only place they can go back is where they came from. If you came from somewhere you escaped, what are you going back to? You're going back to death. There's, there's, there's nothing, there's no ifs, ands, and, and, and buts about it. They send them back to death, and, and they do that. They do. They leave them. They leave them without food. They leave them without water. They leave them without shelter. They leave them without a thought in the world because they don't care. And you know what? I, like I said, I'm sure a lot of people are going to turn on me for this very statement. And as God is my witness, I attest to the fact that they're abandoning us. Now, don't get me wrong. Not all of them. A lot of them love us. But as God is my witness, they are abandoning us. And I don't care who hates me for this. 
I don't care who turns against me for this. I'm not here to please them. I'm here to please God. I'm not here to serve them. I'm here to serve God. And I will not speak bullshit, but I will tell you the truth. And verily, I tell you the world is abandoning us and we need help. Who's going to help us? These people found a way out. They found a way to escape Mosul. And what happens? They're turned back by the very forces that are supposed to be defending them, right? How is that defending them? They sent them back to a certain death. What do you mean? That's absurd. The people that are fighting for quote-unquote humanity, right? Since when weren't Christians humans? Please tell me this. Because I've never seen it. They're sent back to die, and they do die. They do. I promise you they do. Christians are not an offensive people. We are a defensive people. But I promise you, when we, when we go on the defense, it, it's like putting a lion on a cat's, uh, what's the word? A leash? Uh, a cat's leash. If you put a lion on a cat's leash, it will hold it back for a little. But when it releases, you, know, you will see the fury of this animal. One thing you have to know about ISIS is, you know, they, they literally are a thief in the night. They are cowards. The only reason they're as strong as they are today is because the media. They are not what the media makes them out to be, I promise you. They love to attack at night. They love to attack in, in the dusk. They love to attack when it's foggy. They love to attack when it's raining. You know what they do? They do hit and runs, sort of like a drive-by. If you've ever lived in in uh, an urbanized area that's that's very poor, you you will see within, like for instance, crop by gangs, you will see drive-bys. It's a very cowardly crime. This is what they are known for in these areas. They they are very cowardly. They will not come out and fight you man to man. They love to launch mortars. They've been known to launch Katusha rockets. They've launched Katusha rockets on Bakota. The one thing you have to understand is that they will not come out and fight like men because they they, they, they don't want it. I mean, they don't. They, they, they'll launch a couple suicide bombers, this and that, but it's very difficult to, to get them to come out and fight man to man uh, because they're not men. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He who would be the first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many.
his known the array come what anna a merle come the heaven the array come the tsalon the reda fe come the world the hen the heaven a havin lo come I have learned to love my enemy in combat more than in peace. church was there for me in the, in the form of the institution of the physical building when I needed help they weren't there mm -hmm. but when I needed someone when I needed hope these people actually gave me a hope they really did mm -hmm. and, and, and this is where you have to put religion aside and you have to literally put humanity first and foremost why did I return to Iraq because they deserve it Matthew Kali Nagamo Krishna Chen Ute Ulal Shmo Mavalim Sakelita O Prisaitam Matthew Kali Nagamo God is so graceful The man on the cross next to him He said I promise you salvation and so if jesus can do that what better teacher do i have than to do the same thing as he's done in my luck you might not be with me What did Jesus say? Jesus said, when you go, you sell your mantle. And in these times, this is the most precious thing you have. And he says, you pick up the sword. is the easiest thing you will ever do. I don't know, I haven't died, but I promise you this, I've, I've faced death on so many accounts and I, I laugh at it, you know? Death death has no no weight over us, you know? You can only die one death if you're a Christian, you know? The second death, if your faith is professed in Christ, is nothing to you, you know? But the biggest battle of them all is is making the world care. And that's that's harder than the physical fight itself. How do you make a people care in the first world? You know, they go to work, they have Mercedes, they have a BMW, they have a nice house. What do they want? What do they want? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know why I cry? I don't cry because my friends died. I, I mean, to, to, in this, I rejoice. I rejoice in the Lord. But the, the, why I cry is because people want a, a nicer car. People want a bigger house. 
people want this and that, like they, they want everything that means nothing. Have they not seen a man being burnt alive? Have they recently not seen a group of men being drowned? The fact is, if you can watch these videos and not find it in your heart to give a damn, nothing I say will make them give a damn. I mean, do you know what it's like to walk into a house and, and to see every momento we take for granted gone? It stays there, but for them, it's gone. Their crucifixes, their rosaries, their Bibles. I mean, what more do you need? Fighting is easy. I promise you, fighting is easy. Dying is even easier. The hardest thing you will ever do is making the world, making every individual family care about anyone except for their own family. Pick up your cross and, and carry it the same way that Jesus did. But the thing that people mistake is that I promise you and I, and I speak from, from my heart to anyone viewing this, it's not easy. I promise you, you know what? I'll even go a step further. Not only is it not easy, it is the most difficult thing you will ever do. I've sacrificed my family. I've sacrificed everything I love in this world. Do you know what it's like to make your mother cry? You know what I'm saying? Do you know what it's like for for your parents to just just wish you were home? You know, mm -hmm. like it's it's the most difficult thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. But if if you want me to be a hundred percent sincere and honest, even at the cost of my life, the cost of my wife the cost of my families. I will sacrifice everything in this world I love for what I believe. If someone is to hold a knife to my throat and say, deny Jesus or I will sacrifice your whole family, you know what I'll tell them? Peace be with them, because I know where they're going. So I'll tell you this, to pick up your cross and carry it is not easy, but I promise you it is the most rewarding thing you will ever do in this life and the next. Where, where is the world, you know? What is it that does it have to take for these to be your brothers and sisters and children and parents, for you to give a damn, you know? Jesus Jesus cared about every one of you so much that, that he gave his life, and you can't even give your time. You, you can't donate a couple of dollars to help these people because you want a nicer car or a bigger house. And no one's asking you to give your life. All the world is asking, all the Christianity is asking you for is to give a damn. It's not much. I mean, well, what do you need? Do you, do you need to see your child getting cut up? Do you need to see your wife getting raped by a, a, a group of men and then sold to the next group of men to be raped all over again for you to care? I mean, I, I don't know what it's going to take, but it, it's already been too much, you know? Uh, we've already let it go too far. You know, there's an old quote that says, now, what, what does it take for evil to prosper, you know? Good men to do nothing. And and if we're not good men, then God damn us. Because we truly deserve his damnation for not having enough heart to stand up to evil. Activities you guys were doing out of all of them. What is the most memorable for you? 
as far as combat goes? I I would say ensuring that these church bells ring. Thank you.